Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on the topic of C-Numeric CNC HMI operating areas. Today's presentation will be given by Randy Pearson. Randy, a longtime veteran of the machine tool industry, is the dealer support manager for the Siemens machine tool business. His special interest is CNC training, which he conducts through the various seminars, workshops, and classes he holds at vocational and technical schools, as well as on-site and at Siemens training facilities around the country. During the next 30 minutes or so, there will be live demonstrations of numeric HMI operating areas, along with a question and answer session at the end of this webinar. So without further ado, welcome Randy. Good afternoon. We're going to talk about the major operating areas of the uh, HMI of the Senior Merrick Operate System. There are six major areas that the operators and service people will uh, be using. The first is the machine area. In the machine area is where we get into our JOG, our automatic functions, and our MDI or MDA, depending on which portion of the screen we're looking at. The second area, uh, to get to these uh, menus, we have to use the menu select key, which then will bring up the six major areas, which are machine, parameter, program, program manager, diagnostics, and setup. In the parameter area, that's where we can find our tool list, uh, which contains all the tool information and a graphic of the tool magazine, all our work offsets, and also the tool wear, which also brings up the tool uh, tool life management portion. In the program manager area or the program area, um, the program area will bring up the last open program in the editor, whereas the program manager allows you to choose which program you want to see, edit, or simulate uh, in the editor. In our diagnostics area, it will come up and we can see the active alarms, any active messages, the entire alarm log. Uh, we can do NCPLC diagnostics, and we can see our versions, as well as logbook functions and some maintenance functions that will be pulled up. And when we get to the live present portion of it, we will be able to go through all of those screens. Operating area is set up. In the setup area, all of the machine data, all the channel machine data, all of the access machine data can be found here. Uh, this is more in a commissioning or an adjustment type scenario, um, changing a new motor, uh, adding an access, uh, modifying maximum feed rates. Uh, all of that is done in this portion of the uh, setup, as well as the HMI which allows you to set up your logic drives, do diagnostics on your networking, um, auto-tuning for the servos. We can get all the system data, all the system files, uh, copy and paste screen images, <clears throat> uh, add cycles, um, anything you need to do with the file structure, and also um, view all the active licenses. And if you order an option and get a new license, the license area is where that uh, new license number is put in, so you can activate that option. We will now go to the demo portion where we will actually see the different areas we're looking at. From the main screen, on the operator panel, we have a menu select key. The menu select key will bring up the soft keys for your machine, parameter, program, program manager, diagnostics, and setup keys. In the machine area, we have our JOG, we have our MDI, and we also have our auto. So this is where you do your setups, uh, write an MDI program for a spindle warm-up, uh, test tool changing, make sure your tools are set up correctly, or run your part program, and also do a simultaneous record of the program as it's running. If we then hit menu select, we can go to look at the parameter area. And again, in the parameter area, we first come up with the tool list. This is all the tools that are in your magazine with all their offsets, their radiuses, and any tools that are defined but not loaded into the magazine. 
From here, you can measure a tool. We can set a different edge. We can unload a tool. We can reload the tool. Uh, extend over, you can sort or filter your tools. You can check details of your tools from this port side. In the tool where, again, for each tool, we will have a where value for the length and the radius. And we can also come in and work with our tool life management from this side. So you can set your tool management in time, cuts. And we can also view the magazine to see which tools are enabled, which are oversized tools, which have been disabled, and our work offsets. So we can see the current active offset. We can get an overview of that offset. We can view all of the um, settable offsets available in the control, get details on each one, And we have our uh, user variable screen, which is uh, user-defined variables. You can use them in a part program. You can read and write to these parameters from your part program, as well as the GUDs, which are normally used for uh, probing and measuring functions, as well as some uh, family of parts type operations. We have our setting data, which allows you to set your maximum and minimum uh, travels for uh, limitation, travel limitations. We have spindle data to set minimum and maximum spindle RPMs, as well as a maximum RPM for constant surface speed. If we then look at menu select again, we can come over to the program. Now, if there is no program in the editor, it comes up to the program manager. If I had a program open in the editor, and I went to the machine area, and then came back to program, it will open up the last program that was in the editor. From here, I can also go to the program manager, which allows me to see what part programs are available, sub-programs, work pieces, and in my work pieces, which main programs and sub-programs are already loaded into the machine. From here, you can execute, you can define a new program, you can open a program, you can copy and paste them. Excuse me. So you have full program management here, as well as getting to a local drive, your USB, and if you had defined your network, you would have a network connection key uh, to, right here in the soft keys. We can also archive preview window, which will open up a small four or five line section of the program. Uh, we can get the properties for um, protection levels for each of the programs. So this way we can see who has the authority to edit a program, look at a program, read the program, and even delete the program. And we go back to menu. In the diagnostics, any active alarms would be in this alarm list. Messages would be any active messages. If there was a tool radius comp message, if there was a, uh, an active over travel, uh, those would show up on these here. Uh, the alarm log gives us a full log of all the alarms that have happened since the machine was basically turned on from the beginning. Inside the alarms, you will see the time and it was started and cleared, the alarm number, and the text of the alarm. And most times you can get help from each of these by using the help key. Um, but this is a running list of all the alarms on the machine. You can save that log, which then from the setup area, we can go in out and uh, send it in for review or analysis. Uh, we can have our settings as to how many entries, and if you want to write the file every time it adds an alarm, you can sort by date or ascending or descending order. You can display new, which will erase this list and start a brand new list of alarms. NC variables, this is where we can uh, 
you had PLC alarms and you knew the um, the PLC bit or the input or output that you were looking at, you could see its state from here. Uh, we can insert variables. We could display the comments. Uh, operand plus and minus to go to the next one in line. You could actually change a bit so you could test if it was actually working or not. Uh, if it was just the switch that was bad or the uh, LED wasn't coming on, you could force the LED on to make sure that it was uh, working or not. We also have in here our versions. Uh, it's a very critical thing that when somebody calls in with a problem on a machine and they want to know get service, one of the first things that uh, is going to be asked is what is the version number of your software. Under the system software, we can get the details from here, and we can find the uh, system software number. We can get details to get all of the basic applications, the 3D graphics. All of the version numbers are here for the, uh, the service and the hotline support to be able to give you the best assistance. We also have a logbook, and the logbook is so that so you can put the machine name, machine serial number, uh, the dealer name, the manufacturer of the machine, and the end user's name. And then any time a service tech or a applications guy comes in and makes a change or writes something or modifies a program, uh, this can be done in making a new entry into the logbook. You can say who you were, what company you work for, and what you did tested program, found problem, fixed. And when we say OK, that entry is now in this permanent electronic logbook. Uh, we can also use, we use this for uh, registering the machine to start warranties with the startup complete and the machine installed. So then we can take these files and put them in so that our, the, the service personnel have a full build list of the machine and all the information regarding uh, everything on the machine. We can go back. We can get details on pretty much everything on here. We can also get our system utilization. We can do traces, access diagnosis, so we can see which axes are actually enabled, uh, which one may have a problem. We can check the service axis to get our following error system deviation, contour deviations, uh, overrides. So even on the override, which says it's at 1%, if I were to change the override, it now goes up to whatever I've got the override set to. So you can verify that the override is working on all axes that should be the same. We can select an axis by its, this pull down. We can just go axis plus or axis minus to get from one to the next. Uh, trace would be for uh, PLC traces. You can check how long it takes to trigger uh, a bit, how long it's on, how long it takes to turn it back off again. Uh, so you can do NC traces and drive traces from here. Anytime you get lost and don't know where you're at, and if you hit the key on the machine panel that says machine, it takes you right back to the main screen and you can start all over again to go back to your menu select. And now say we want to get into our startup. And in startup, we have our machine data. We have the general machine data, uh, which affect everything on the machine. We have channel machine data, which only affect certain things within a channel on a machine. If you had three channels, you would have three sets of channel machine data. Uh, we have our axis machine data, which tells it um, if it's a rotary axis, how many encoders are on it, which is the active encoder, uh, what's the ratio from the uh, pulleys that are on it. If it's a rotary table, you have the gear ratio. Um, you can set your multiplying factors for the uh, encoders. Uh, your, grid disk, uh, your grid shift can be set here, work area checks. And then we have user views which would be user-defined uh, parameters. The NC gives us, in this case, uh, just the drive, the uh, axes and their names. 
how much NC memory is available. So for tools, we have 43 tools being used. There's 200 available. So that would give us 157 tools available. So you can check all of the different memory allocations and how much is being used of those allocations. The HMI, we can go and look at the alarm text. We can also set up our logic drive. So if you had a network set up, we can come in here and we can turn on the network drive and define a soft key uh, that would go in the program manager. We have our system data, which allows me to look at, again, all my work pieces that are available, the programs that are in those work pieces, any part programs I would have, uh, NC active data, and we can copy these out and put them on a flash drive and send them into uh, the dealer service people. So we can send them into hotline people if they request that information. And we also have the log functions where if we had taken a screenshot, we can have all the screens that we took images of. We can copy these out, put them on a USB, <coughs> paste them into an email or paste them into a Word document uh, to make a process, to make a, an easy to follow directions to get from one screen to another or if there was a problem in a program you can highlight the pro that line and do a screen dump and then email that out. We also have optimization and test. Optimization and test is where we do our servo tuning. Uh, on the simulation, I do not have the availability of servo, so I can't go through this, but it would allow you to tune each axis individually. It will give you the original settings, the settings that it determined, and ask if you would like to save those, or if you wanted to go and manually adjust some of those <coughs> uh, settings yourself. Uh, the options, of course, would be one NC start, automatically start measurements, automatically accept measurements, uh, save drive boot files, which would be saving all the parameters of the settings. And you can show an activity. It will show you when it was tuned and which axes were tuned. You can also do traces here. So you can trace the uh, axes as you were tuning them. You could do uh, your circle and see which axis, if X and Y were running the same and you were getting true circles and, uh, off the encoder feedback. We can also go look at the licenses. This will show us all options that are available on a control. If there was an option that needed to be even ordered, it will give you the part number here that needs to be ordered. And it will show you if it's got a valid license, and if it does, if that has actually been activated in the machine. If it's if it's not licensed, you need to order a new license for this part number, and they will give you a, uh, you'll get a license that you can get a new key for, which would give us a key like this that we'd have to put in. Uh, probably not as long as this one is, but it would be a, uh, a alphanumeric key that you would have to type in uh, in order to activate the license, that option and then be able to go and turn that option on. It can also tell you if there's licenses turned on that do not have a valid key for it. We can export the license. So if you wanted to, you had a service on the machine and you needed to export this license so when they commission the machine back up, you can export the license and then all your options will come back. And again, from this point, anytime you need to get back to the main screen, you can just hit machine, and it will take you right back to the main screen of the machine. If you hit menu select two times, it will take you to the last screen you were at, so you can toggle between any two screens at any given time. Thank you. Let me uh, 
switch over here and see if there's some questions. Um, there have been a couple that came in during your presentation, Randy. Um, looks like we've got four or five here, so let me start with this one. <clears throat> I noticed that there's both program and program manager in the horizontal menu. What's the difference between the two? The program in menu select program will bring up the last opened program. Program manager takes you to the full file structure. So if you had a program that was already opened in the editor and you just hit program, it will go to that program. It will open it up in the editor. If you had no programs open, it actually will bring you into the program manager so you can select a program that you would like to edit. All right. Uh, the second question that has come in, can the horizontal and vertical menus be modified? In particular, can one of the submenu buttons that is frequently used be placed on the highest level menu? Mm, there's a ways that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's I and I files that can be modified to put the keys in different positions, <clears throat> but it's, that's normally not recommended. Um, only because if something were to happen to the machine and the service guys come in and they load the ghost image or they load the new archive uh, system software, it's going to go back to the original. Um, the keys are normally left in these because it's the same on all machines. Keys can be added in if you've got special functions, uh, but the main basic keys, uh, especially when you get into uh, the machine area for, say, JOG, there's no provision to take the settings key and move it up to the main screen here. Okay. Uh, the next question is, is there a home button that brings you back to the base display if you're not sure what menu level you're currently in? The home button would basically be this key marked M or machine on the operator panel. Uh, so the, no matter where you were at and how deep you were in, the different areas, by hitting the machine key, <clears throat> brings you right back to the main screen of the machine. From that point, you can always go back into the different areas. So the home key would basically be the, the M key, the machine key. Okay. Um, let me check Q&A in the chat. There's another question here. Is there a document that shows the menu tree that can be printed for operator reference or training purposes? Uh, yes, in, so, in most of the new manuals there is a full menu tree that says if you hit the uh, parameter key, that when you hit the parameter key you will get these set of keys, and if you hit the tool list you'll get these functions underneath, or if you hit the tool where you'll get these functions. So you could actually follow the tree down to see, I want to get here, this is the key that I had to hit, or this is where I'm at, how did I get there, and you can follow the structure back up to the, the main key. Okay. Looks like there is one more question. Can any of the menus be password protected so operators don't go into these areas? Maybe like setup? Actually, there, there is. We have seven levels of password protection on the uh, Fiend American Control. Um, there are three passwords, and there's normally four uh, positions of a key switch. Uh, some OBMs use their own format of that, but there is normally a total of seven password protection levels. And the easiest one to see is if we went into the setup and we have general channel access and user views, if I were to remove the passwords and take it down to the lowest level that I've got, you see I don't have any of those soft keys anymore. They've all gone away. So depending on the level of protection you're at, certain keys will be on the screen and at other times they won't be. This gives you an area for a strictly an operator that pushes, you know, cycle start, cycle stop. Uh, for the setup guy that needs to set the tool where, the tool uh, set a offset or select a program. For the 
lead guy that's doing the edits or full setups. Different levels have different accesses on the soft keys. All right. Let me just check the chat or the Q&A for any other questions. All right, that looks like that's it on the questions. Wanted to bring everyone's uh, attention to some additional resources that we have available. We've got a new G-Code compatibility app. Um, it's a handy CNC compatibility app that helps you to quickly find um, compatible codes for Siemens and ISO G-Codes. Formatting examples are provided, so that'll make really our C numeric C controller even easier for you to use. Uh, service and support is right at your fingertips. There's uh, links, uh, web links tool and social media feeds. If you're uh, following us on Twitter and Facebook, you can download this at free of cost on the iTunes uh, on the iTunes Store. If you go to uh, CNC for You on the web, here you'll see the address usa.siemens.com/cnc4u. You'll find um, uh, documentation and downloads listing of future webinars with the opportunity for you to register, information about um, training, a whole slew of new CNC videos and interactive tools. Here you'll find the links for Facebook and Twitter. If you are on social media, please join us and join that conversation. And last but not least, I wanted to also bring everyone's attention to IMTS. If you visit us online at usa.siemens.com slash IMTS, You'll be able to see a short video about what we'll present at the show, including um, some new product, uh, including the new C numeric 808D. So go online and check those out. Let me just check one more time if there's any other questions that have come in. Looks like no. So based on that, we'll bring this uh, today's uh, webinar to a conclusion. We thank everyone for their time, for taking time out of their busy day to, to join us. Please join us for our next webinar session, and again, you'll find all of our webinars on CNC4U. Um, thank you very much, and have a great day.